Hi you all, welcome back. You are watching Mega Projects and Skyscrapers. Have you ever wondered if there is any limit to how high the maximum, the farthest height of a building could be? Today, in this video, we will be telling you how high we can build. Before we advise you, make sure you subscribe to our channel to watch some of the most exciting and fun videos. Also, hit the bell icon to get notified about the new videos we upload here. The competition is never ending. Within this period of just just 20 years, the world's tallest building was built three times in New York City, the 282.5 meter Bank of Manhattan in 1930, the 319 Chrysler Building in a few months after, and then 11 months later, the 381 meter Empire State Building in 1931. The era of structural advancements and ego boosting has only strengthened in the decades since. In 2003, the 509 meter Taipei 101 unseated the 452 2 meters Petronas Towers in Kuala Lumpur after a seven-year reign of the world's tallest. In 2010, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai far hopped over Taipei 101, climbing up to 828 meters. Bold developers in China want to go 10 meters higher later this year with a 220-story prefab tower that can be constructed in a baffling 90 days. And then, in 2018, the Kingdom Tower in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, whose construction has already begun, will be standing the tallest in the world by 2022, probably. Every two-year period makes us realize that the sky is a limit, but the atmosphere is not limited. The Kingdom Tower is proposed to be one kilometer long in height. Will this journey to the sky ever end? Not in the future, we already see, at least. But there has to be some dead end, some most powerful possible height that construction can touch. There will eventually be the world's tallest building that will forever be the most elevated and be unbeatable because there has to be a limit to the all-sky high rise, right? Ask a building professional or skyscraper expert and they'll tell you many limitations that stop towers from rising ever higher. Materials, physical human comfort, elevator technology, and most significantly, money all play a task in determining how tall a building can or can't go. But surely there must be some physical limitations that might prevent a building from rising too high. We couldn't, for instance, build a building that reach the moon because in scientific terms the moon hit the building and the building goes boom but there could be a building with a penthouse in space beyond earth's atmosphere or 100 mile tall building or even a one mile building the council on tall buildings and concrete habitat a gaggle curious about and focused on the phenomenon of skyscrapers recently asked a bunch of leading skyscraper architects and designers about some of the limitations of tall buildings they wondered what does one thing? Is that the single biggest limiting factor that might prevent humanity from creating a mile-high tower or higher? The responses are compiled during this video and tend to concentrate on the pragmatic technicalities of handling funding in the property market or the shortage of natural light in wide-based buildings. The predominant problem is within the elevator and facility, says Adrian Smith, the architect behind the present tallest building in the world and also one that may soon out rank it, the kilometer-tall Kingdom Tower in Jeddah. But in terms of structural limitations, the final word expert is probably going William Baker. He's the highest structural engineer at Skidmore, Owings and Merrill, and he worked with Smith on the Burj Khalifa, designing the system that allowed it to rise so high. That system referred to as the buttress core, maybe a pretty three-wing spear that permits stability, viably usable space, and limited loss of freedom for structural elements. Baker says the buttress core design might build structures even taller than the Burj Khalifa. We could go twice that or more, he says. And though he calls skyscraper design a fairly serious undertaking, he also thinks it's very feasible to create much taller than even the Kingdom Tower. We could easily do a kilometer. We could easily do a mile, he says. We could do a minimum of a mile and possibly quite a bit more. The buttress core would probably need to be modified to travel much above a mile. But Baker says that other systems may be well designed. He's working on a number of them now. One idea for a replacement system would be buildings with hollowed bases. Think of the Eiffel Tower, says Tim Johnson. He's chairman at the Council on Tall Buildings and Concrete Habitat and a partner at the architecture firm NBBJ. And he says any tall
Shaw building would have to be a supersized version of the Parisian icon. Otherwise, the lower floors required to support the gradually narrowing structure would be way too big even to refill. For a Middle East based client, he is not allowed to spot. Johnson worked on a project back within the late 2000s, designing a building that might be a mile and a half tall with 500 stories. Somewhat of theoretical practice, the design team identified between 8 and 10 inventions that would have had to take place to build a building that tall. Not innovations, Johnson says, but inventions, as in entirely new technologies and materials. One of the client's requirements was to push human ingenuity. He says, consider them pushed. With those inventions and the hollow Eiffel Tower-like base, Johnson says the look could have worked. The project was dodged due to the crash of the real estate market in late 2000s. But if things were to alter, that building may be developed, he says. We prove that it's physically and even programmatically possible to create a building a mile and a half tall. If someone would have said, do it two miles, we probably could have done that too, Johnson says. A lot of it comes down to money. Who's going to have that kind of capital? As far as the structure is bothered, others think it's possible too. John Meltkalf recently observed a 1990s era concept for a two and a half mile volcano-looking super tower in Tokyo called the Exceed 4000 that features a similar Eiffel Tower-ishness to it. As Metcalf notes, this 4,000-meter sky penetrator was never built for a range of reasons. Still, the foremost obvious is that real estate in Tokyo isn't exactly cheap. The bottom of this abnormally small tower would eat up blocks and blocks if it had been to be stable. Actually, the bottom of this structure consisted with conceptual drawings would have spread for miles and miles, almost just like the base of Mount Fuji itself, about 225 meters more minor than the XC 4000. A building taller than a mountain seems preposterous, but in keeping with Baker, it's entirely possible. You could conceivably go above the tallest mountain as long as you kept spreading a wider and wider base, Baker says. Theoretically, then, a building might be built a minimum of as tall as 8,849 meters one meter taller than Everest. The bottom of that mountain, per these theoretical calculations, is about 4,100 square kilometers, an enormous footprint for a building, even one with a hollow core. But given structural systems, just like the buttressed core, the bottom probably wouldn't be nearly as large as that of a mountain. And this theoretical tallest building could probably go even more elevated than 8,849 meters, Baker says, because buildings are far lighter than solid mountains. The Burj Khalifa, he estimates, is about 15% structure and 85% air. Supported some quick math, if a building is merely 15% as heavy as a solid object, it might be 6.6667 times taller and way constant than that definite object. Hypothetically, a building could climb to just about 59,000 meters without outweighing Everest or even crushing the very earth below, right? When designing a building, several significant decisions are made considering the permitted maximum height, the local area character, and the building's position within the town or city context, the immediate streetscape character, particularly consistency of skyline, and the need for punctuation and accent, local street views, strategic views, and amenity views, the potential effect of overshadowing adjacent public space and neighboring properties are also observed. Developers also keep in mind the local microclimactic factors, particularly wind, and the relationship of height to frontage, width, and building depth. The configuration of any taller elements about the street edge and ground levels is also an important observation that needs to be made. A podium may be used in conjunction with a more elevated element to ensure consistency at the ground. Well, we never even imagined that a kilometer measurement could be taken from above the ground either. But here are the surprises almost ready to amaze us. With this, we come to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If so, let us know by giving it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to our channel to not miss out on any of our fun stuff. Until then, stay tuned for more.